Welcome to Learning Lad YouTube channel. In this video, we will see how we can write a C++ program to find the factorial of a number. So here, first we will see what exactly is the factorial of a number. If we have a number, for example, let us say n, then the factorial of this number n, which is denoted by this exclamation mark, and we call it as n factorial, is actually equal to the product of all positive integers from 1 to n, which is nothing but we have to take all the positive integers starting from 1 up to n and we have to multiply them and whatever the result that we get that is called as the factorial of this number n. Now here we can do it in reverse order also. So we can take n multiply by n minus 1 multiplied by n minus 2 and similarly we can do that you know up to 1. Now for example if we have the number let us say 4 then 4 factorial is equal to 4 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 1 or 1, 2, 3 and 4 we're going to multiply them and whatever the result that we get which is equal to 24 is the factorial of 4. Now when we talk about the factorials we have to keep in mind of a couple of things which is nothing but for the negative numbers we can't compute the factorial for the numbers 0 and 1 the factorial value is equal to 1 that is 0 factorial equal to 1 and 1 factorial equal to 1. Now here let us see how we can write a C++ program to find the factorial of a number. I have already written some code I have included the iostream header file and then I have mentioned that we are using the features which are defined inside the std namespace and then we have the main function. Now the first thing that we do here is we will declare the variables that we need. In this program what we can do is we can ask the user to enter the number for which he wants to find the factorial. So to store that user input we need a variable. I'm going to take integer type of variable and I'm going to call it as number. After that we need another variable for storing the factorial value that we are going to calculate and one thing that we have to keep in mind is the factorial value can become a large number for the smaller numbers for example for the number let us say um, 15 the 15 factorial will be a huge number so in our program what we do is we take the data type which can contain the huge number but the built-in data type that can contain the largest integer number, I think it can't contain the factorial of the numbers above 20. So uh, while uh, providing the input in this program, we need to enter the smaller numbers. Now to store the factorial value, uh, we're going to take a variable and we're going to say that it is an unsigned variable, which means it can contain only positive numbers. And that's because we already know that the factorial value will be a positive number. I'm going to take long long and I'm going to call it as factorial and I will initialize this variable with a value of 1. Okay, now what we can do is we can ask the user to enter the number. So I'm going to use a C out and I'm going to say enter the number and whatever the number the user is going to enter, we will read that using the C in and we will store that in this number variable. Now the next thing that we have to do is we have to check whether the user has entered a negative number or whether the user has entered 0 or whether user has entered a number greater than 1. So here we will use the if conditional statement and uh, we will check whether the number entered by the user is a negative number or not. If the number variable contains a value which is less than 0 then it means that the number entered by the user is a negative number. So we will display a message in, for this case and we will say can't compute the factorial for negative numbers. Okay, now we need to check whether user has entered a number which is 0 or 1. That's because we know that for the numbers 0 and 1, the factorial value is 1. We can directly display that. So I'm going to use the else if and I'm going to write the condition here as whether this number variable contains a value which is less than 2. Now what happens here is we come to this else if part only if this first condition fails. 
or if this first condition evaluates to false if the first condition is evaluated to false in this if then it means that the number entered by the user is not less than 0 so in this else if block we are checking whether the number variable is containing a value which is less than 2 if this one evaluates to true then it means that the number entered by the user is either 0 or 1 so in this case we will display a message using the cout first we will display the uh, value present in this number variable and then we will display the factorial symbol equal to and then we will display the value that we have stored in this factorial variable which is 1 you know if you remember then we have initialized this factorial variable with a value of 1 and after that we will have the else block and we come to this else block when the number entered by the user is greater than or equal to 2 so now what we have to do is we have to take the all positive integers from 1 to the number entered by the user and we have to multiply them so what we can do is we can use a for loop or we can use any other loop i'm going to use a for loop and here i'm going to take a variable and it will be of type integer type i'm going to call this variable as num and i'm going to initialize this variable with the value present in this number variable and after that i need to write the condition which will determine how many times this for loop will execute the condition that i'm going to write here will be as long as this num variable contains a value which is greater than or equal to 2 i want to run this for loop and after that since we are starting from the number and we are coming in the backward direction we will decrement the value of the num variable if we initialize this num variable with 1 then we have to go in the ascending order but here we are starting with the number that the user has entered and we are coming in the descending order so with every iteration we will decrement the value of this num variable now inside this for loop what i can do is i can show you guys the numbers that we get so i'm going to use a cout and i'm going to display the value which we get for this num variable and i'm going to end that line and also here i have mentioned the condition as num variable containing a value greater than or equal to 2. now let us say the user is going to enter the number 4 he wants to find the factorial of the number 4. so here what we are doing is we are initializing num with 4 and this for loop will run for the numbers 4 3 and 2 but to find the factorial of the number 4 we have to multiply 4 3 2 1 here i'm skipping one that's because if we multiply the number by one it will not change the result so i'm skipping one here if you want to multiply it by one then you can write the condition like this okay so i'm gonna write in two here now i'm gonna save this program and i'm gonna run it i'm gonna say four and here you guys can see the number that the user has entered four is not a negative number and it is not less than 2 so we are in the else block and the for loop has run and it has provided the numbers 4 3 and 2 so now what we have to do is we have to multiply them and we have to store the result so what we can do is we can use the factorial variable that we have defined in our program so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the factorial variable so i'm going to write factorial I'm going to multiply that with the value that we get for the num variable in every iteration of this for loop and then I'm going to store that result back in this factorial variable. So we will perform factorial equal to factorial multiplied by num. So with every iteration the num variable will contain a number and when we come out of this uh, for loop we will have the multiplication of all positive numbers from 2 to whatever the number the user is gonna enter so now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna copy this cout statement which will display the factorial value i'm gonna paste that after this for loop inside the else block okay it will just display the factorial value that will be uh, present in this factorial variable so now 
we have uh, written the program in here i'm gonna run it enter the number i'm gonna say negative four it will display can't compute the factorial for negative numbers and this time i'm gonna say zero it will display zero factorial equal to one and this time i'm gonna say one it will display one factorial equal to one and this time i'm gonna say four it will display 4 factorial equal to 24. So now the program is working. Now let us see how the factorial value is calculated in here. In this program, the user has entered the number 4 and that value will be stored in this number variable. Okay. And we have initialized the factorial variable with a value of 1. Now the number variable is containing 4 that is the user input and it is not less than 0 so if condition will evaluate to false so we come to the else if block here 4 is not less than 2 so it will also evaluate to false so we come to the else block and this for loop will be executed. So here in this for loop we are initializing the num variable with the value present in this number variable which is equal to 4 and after that this condition is checked whether num variable is containing a value which is greater than or equal to 2 here 4 is greater than or equal to 2 which will evaluate to true so we execute the body of this for loop so it will be factorial equal to factorial multiplied by num factorial variable is containing 1 multiplied by 4 that is the value present in this num variable we get 4 and that will be stored back in the factorial variable. Now after that we don't have any other statement to execute in this for loop. So it will come to this updation part. It will decrement the value of this num variable. So num variable is containing 4. When we decrement that by 1 it will contain 3. Now this condition is checked again that is 3 greater than or equal to 2 which will evaluate to true so we execute the body of this for loop again so it will be factorial 4 multiplied by value present in this num variable which is equal to 3 and we get 12 and that 12 will be stored in the factorial variable again so the factorial variable will get 12 and after that we don't have any other statement to execute inside this uh, body of this for loop so we come to this updation part value will be decremented the num variables value will be decremented and it will become 2 and again this condition is checked 2 greater than or equal to 2 which is true so we execute the body of this for loop again so it will be factorial multiplied by num which is equal to 24 and that value will be stored in this factorial variable and after that we don't have any statements inside this uh, for loop body to execute so we come to the updation part now the num variable is containing 2 and it will be decremented by 1 so it will become 1 and after that this condition is checked 1 greater than or equal to 2 which will evaluate to false so the for loop will stop executing we come out of this for loop and we execute the next statement that we have inside the else block which is this C out statement which will display 4 factorial is equal to the value present in this factorial variable which is 24. So we get 4 factorial equal to 24 as the output. Now in this program we have to keep in mind of one thing that I have said in the beginning that is the factorial value for small small numbers is a huge number so the data type that will uh, that we use in our program depending on that we have to enter the input for example if you want to uh, calculate the factorial of the number 100 then this program will not produce that it will provide incorrect result that's because the unsigned long long can't hold the factorial value of the number 100 it will be a huge number so that's the one thing that you have to keep in mind so this is it guys for this video thank you for watching if you like it hit the like button if you don't like it then hit the dislike button if you want to say something then write that in the comment box for more tutorials like this do subscribe to the channel thank you for watching see you later in the next video